Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday, the weekly YouTube series where we talk about video game console repairs, mods, and restorations. And uh, this week I have a really cool Game & Watch tabletop, and this is for the game Popeye. And um, yeah, Ninten Nintendo made a couple of these along with the smaller sized Game & Watches. Um, they're really hard to find when you can find them. They sometimes have problems, sometimes not. But either way, they're super cool. They're really nice to have as a collectible uh, on like your shelf or something like that. So, yeah, this one, um, it doesn't turn on, it doesn't do anything at all, um, but I think I know the reason why, and I think it has to do with these, uh, these battery terminals here. So, uh, I'm going to zoom in and take a closer look and show you guys, and uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to do a little bit of some chemistry to see if we can restore these battery terminals back to the way that they should be, and I'm hoping that that's all that this thing needs in order to work again. Okay, so let's get to it. All right, so I just want to give you guys a close-up of what the battery terminals look like. And you see they're, they're kind of like this dull appearance here. And um, normally, you know, when you're talking about battery terminals, they're supposed to be conductive. So, so right now I have the multimeter in continuity mode, which means that when I, I make a connection between these two points, um, there's going to be a beep like that. So you can see that if I take the multimeter and if I touch these sections here, there's nothing. So, so my guess is that what happened is that either some water or maybe some battery acid ate away at whatever kind of nickel coating there used to be on these battery terminals. Um, you can see there's still some left over here. So if I touch this section, um, I kind of, I kind of get a, yeah, you, you hear kind of like a crackle on the speaker. So there's some connection still left there, but barely. Uh, so I think that that's our problem here. I think that the only reason why this thing isn't turning on is that these guys have lost their plating and they're all corroded. And it's probably from battery acid. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take these apart and uh, I'm going to start by sanding these down and polishing them. And I'm going to use a mix of sandpaper and, uh, and Brasso, you know, the dreaded Brasso that you don't want to use on your cartridges. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to polish these up and clean them. And then after that, we're going to do some electroplating and see if we can um, restore these back to their original uh, condition. Okay, so after some pretty significant difficulty, I, um, <laughs> I managed to get the battery terminals out. Um, so you can see that this piece kind of sits in here and locks into place over here. And these guys are the actual supply of power. So you have your your positive terminal here, your ground here, and then this guy just bridges them together so you have two C batteries and that's kind of, you know, how this thing gets power. Uh, so to take this off, this is easy enough, you just have to get rid of these little rubber posts. You just have to take them off with like a pair of tweezers. Um, and then uh, there's just six screws to take this out. Uh, I thought I might need to open up this um, entirely. So to do that, there's actually three screws here, here, and here, but those are really, really horrible to get. So, I mean, I don't really have the right tool for it. I have a very long and thin flathead screwdriver, and this was enough to get in there and get what I needed, but man, this really was horrible. <laughs> so, so yeah, I took those out, and, and that helped me to figure out exactly how the battery terminals were attached, and I, I pulled them out. So, what I'm going to do now is just desolder these really quick, and, um, make sure that I, I keep these taped to the side so they don't fall back into the machine, so I don't have to open the machine again. Um, but yeah, once I have these free, then I'm going to go ahead and start uh, electroplating them, and we'll go through that whole process step by step. All right, so I've got the battery terminals on a, um, on a little piece of cardboard, and uh, I have that because I'm going to be scrubbing them with some Brasso. And, uh, yeah, before anyone thinks anything, I, I just want to say that I absolutely do not recommend Brasso on things like game cartridges because it's, uh, it's very abrasive and it doesn't clean off very easily and you can permanently damage your games. So under no circumstances do I recommend Brasso for your games. However, Brasso does have its purposes and it's a metal polish and that's exactly what I need it for here. I need a polish for this metal so that I can get rid of any potential impurities before I start the electroplating process because those impurities are going to interfere with the chemical reaction and I won't get a good nickel plating. So what I'm going to do is just take the Brasso with a toothbrush here and just give it a good scrub. Just try to get rid of whatever gunk 
uh, was left over from the battery corrosion. You can already see that it's made quite a nice difference on that piece right there. All right, so uh, I think that's looking a lot better. I can't tell 100% for sure, but um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just rinse this in some acetone, you know, nail polish remover. That should get rid of the acid. That should get rid of the um, the brasso, and it should also get rid of any kind of residual grease or anything like that. So some acetone, uh, some alcohol, all of that is is good for for cleaning this off. Because I don't want to leave this behind either. I want to get rid of it. Um, it does seem to have made an improvement. They're they're definitely looking better. But um, but yeah, I still don't think that these are going to be conductive in their current state. So. Uh, so yeah, in our next step, we're going to go ahead and make our electroplating solution, and I'll show you guys how to do that. And uh, then we'll electroplate these guys and make them uh, work again. Okay, back in a second. Alright guys, so I'm back, and uh, i just like to apologize in advance for the 3D printer noises. I'm sorry if that's coming out a little bit loud. I kind of had no choice. I had to just get some stuff printed in the meantime while I'm working on this project. Uh, so anyway, we are all set up for electroplating, and I'm going to describe what I'm doing here with this setup. So <clears throat> the first thing that you need is some kind of a glass container. Um, you want to use glass because glass is inert. It's not going to react with your chemical reaction. So I just grabbed this, you know, Tostitos uh, salsa jar, which uh, was already empty. Just cleaned it out and got that all set up. <clears throat> I also got a... Um, a piece of pure nickel. Um, you can get these on Amazon for, you know, a couple dollars, really. It's not that expensive. Um, and you can find this, um, you know, a variety of different places. But you really just want a piece of pure nickel. Um, and then I have a power supply. And this is just like your standard uh, cell phone charger. Uh, and I've got like a little adapter piece here that breaks out the positive and negative terminals. And you can see that I have those connected up over here. So I have these bare wires <clears throat> and so 5 volts is coming out of those, and um, and that's what you need. You don't need any high voltage or anything crazy like that. In fact, low voltage is preferred for something like this. Um, you also need some salt, and uh, this is not mandatory, but it definitely it speeds up the reaction. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of salt to the solution. And it's kind of a subjective thing, you know. It just helps to speed up transfer of current from the from one end to the other. So I'm just going to mix this up a little bit here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I think it also helps if your solution is warm. Uh, that's not the case here. This is room temperature. But that's okay. The chemical reaction is still going to take place. It's just going to happen a little bit slower. Um, okay, so we are all set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this alligator clip here. I'm going to connect it up to the positive end. And I'm going to take this black one here and connect it up to the negative end. And for now, we just wait. And um, over time, there should be an accumulation of bubbles over on the negative end. And this uh, this mixture of white vinegar and salt, eventually it's going to change colors. It'll, it'll turn um, like a bluish color. And uh, once that happens, after I let it go for a few hours, then... Then my electroplating solution should basically be ready. So we'll have nickel ions floating in the solution. And um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to connect one of these electrodes over to the battery terminals. And then we'll be able to transfer the nickel to those battery terminals and, uh, and get them all ready. Okay, so we'll be back in a few hours uh, with a ready solution. All right, so it has been maybe about five or six hours, and uh, you can see that the solution is definitely ready now. So it's gone from being clear to being a kind of like greenish color. So so that's kind of, you know, what you're expecting, um, and we're basically ready to go. So, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of disconnect the ground electrode real quick and just stop the reaction, and we're going to take this guy out. This is the anode. Um, you can actually see here, you can see a change in the nickel. And so, so this, is, uh, this is the side that got um, the nickel removed. And those ions are now floating here in the solution. Pretty cool. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take the anode and we're going to connect it to one of these uh, battery terminals. It's important that you don't touch the battery terminals either, because you don't want you don't want any grease um, from your from your skin getting onto uh, 
uh, the terminals because then it'll interfere with the electroplating process. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the anode back into the solution. We're just gonna move it around for a couple of minutes. And you can see that it's doing something. The water's getting cloudy. You can already see it's starting to change color. It's a little bit more silver now. Um, but I need to do this for a couple of minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it in the solution for a couple of minutes. And, uh, and yeah, I'll be back in a minute and we can see how it looks when I'm done. All right, so the reaction is finished, and uh, they came out pretty decent. I mean, not bad at all. They're they're completely silver colored. Um, I can see some nicks and imperfections, and that probably has to do with remaining impurities or um, hydrogen bubbles. If they if they kind of linger on the surface, they can create these little pits uh, on the metal. But uh, you know, in this case, I don't care about having a smooth polish. I just want something that will conduct electricity. So I wanna make sure that when I stick those batteries on here that it works every time. That's what I'm going for here. I think we're gonna accomplish that with these. Um, so I might give them a quick polish with some Brasso just to get rid of a little of the excess nickel and get everything smooth and consistent. Um, and then yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna uh, stick these back into the um, the this Game & Watch tabletop and we'll see what happens. Um, I also, I don't know if this is going to show up on camera too, but I want to show you how these alligator clips look. So these probably already had a nickel coating on them and now they're like, you know, they were in there for more than 15 minutes and so they're really caked in, in nickel now. So I'm going to have to sand all this garbage off. But, you know, these things are, are intended for experiments like this. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead, do what I just discussed and then reassemble the Popeye and we'll see if it's working. All right, so we've got it all reassembled, and now is the moment of truth. Um, I did test the continuity on these, and it seems to be okay. So let's see what happens now when we, when we put these batteries in. Ha! <laughs> all right. Holy crap, it's working. That's beautiful. So, yeah, looks like it's fixed. And it looks like it's working. Sorry, I got wrapped up in the game there. But yeah, the game seems to be playing just fine. Um, all right, so I think we've got another rare console repaired here. Um, so yeah, if you guys like this, then uh, definitely feel free to uh, subscribe to the channel. I have videos like this out every week, and uh, I'd love to get your opinions on electroplating and, you know, if there's any other situations where you might find this kind of technique useful. Um, all right, guys, so, uh, you know, thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate it, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.